God, my God, why have you forsaken me? For a few moments, on today, I want to encourage you from the subject. It ain't easy, but it's necessary. It ain't easy, but it's necessary. Thus far, Jesus, in the midst of his agony, has offered a word of forgiveness. In the midst of the humiliation he is undergoing, Jesus has offered a word of salvation. In the midst of all the suffering he has endured and is enduring, Jesus has offered a word of compassion and relationship in the midst of excruciating torment. Jesus has offered a word of anguish. And now, my brothers and my sisters, in the midst of feeling isolated from the Father, Jesus offers a cry of abandonment. My brothers and my sisters, from a humanistic standpoint, to be abandoned means to be left alone or deserted. Often in a situation where we expect support, where we expect care and where we expect companionship. Being abandoned involves feeling neglected, feeling forsaken or isolated by other folk, leading to a sense of being unwanted or uncared for. In our text, Jesus was crying out in anguish because of the separation he is now experiencing from the Father for the first and only time in all eternity. My brothers and my sisters, this is the only time of which we have record that Jesus did not address God as father. He did not address God as father because the son had taken upon himself the sins of the world and the father turned his back. And in some way, and by some means, Jesus was separated from the father for a brief time at Calvary. And the furious wrath of the father was poured out on the sinless son. In his matchless grace, my brothers and my sisters, he became sin for us who believe in him. We understand that the father forsook the son because the son Took upon, took upon himself our transgressions and our iniquities. Jesus was delivered up because of our transgressions. He who knew no sin became sin 
on our behalf and became a curse for us. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross and died for our sins once and for all. The just for the unjust. Becoming the propitiation for our sins. Jesus Christ, my brothers and my sisters, not only bore man's sins, but actually became sin on our behalf. He did this so that we might be saved from the penalty of sin if we believe. Jesus, my brothers and my sisters, came to teach us perfectly about God and to be a perfect example of God's holiness and righteousness. But as he himself declared, the supreme reason for his coming to earth, earth was not to teach or to be, a, be an example, but to give his life a ransom for many. However, my brothers and my sisters, in the midst of Jesus, Bearing the burden of our sins, he experiences this connection. Furthermore, we understand as human beings that being disconnected is not a pleasurable experience. For the first time in all eternity, Jesus, the son of the living God, experienced abandonment from the Father. Not only did he experience abandonment from the Father, but he also experienced isolation from the Father. So for the first time, Jesus is encountering abandonment and isolation. But not only does he experience abandonment and isolation, there is then the ultimate separation from the Father at Calvary. However, in the midst of all this, Jesus shows us that when we deal with abandonment, when we deal with isolation, and when we find ourselves separated, my brothers and my sisters, we don't stop. We don't throw in the towel. We don't retreat nor do we surrender. However, just like Jesus, in the midst of the pain, in the midst of the humiliation, and in the midst of the disconnectedness, my brothers and my sisters, we keep on pressing on. Tell yourself, it ain't easy, but it's necessary. So with all of this said, what are the difficulties that we come across as we seek to fulfill our purpose in the face of the problematic? Number one, 
the complexities of living out the faith can cause us to feel abandoned. Number two, the perplexities of walking in obedience can and will lead to isolation. Number three, the intricacies of a life dedicated to the cause of Christ can cause us to feel the despair of separation. So with the complexities of living out the faith, with the perplexities of walking in obedience, and with the intricacies of living a life dedicated to the cause, we understand at Calvary, Jesus was abandoned. We understand at Calvary, Jesus was isolated. And at Calvary, Jesus experienced separation. But in the midst of the abandonment, in the midst of the isolation, and in the midst of the separation, Jesus continued to proceed towards his purpose. My brothers and my sisters, as we deal with the giants in our lives, continue to proceed towards your purpose. We may be heavy laden and burdened with the load of care. Continue to proceed towards your purpose. There may be tragedies and there may be fluctuations. Continue to proceed towards your purpose. We may find ourselves abandoned. We may find ourselves isolated and we may find ourselves separated, but continue to proceed towards your purpose. My brothers and my sisters, the songwriter said, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply, staying within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. And from the waters, he lifted me. Now safe am I as we deal with the complexities of living out the faith. We are to be lifted higher by his grace and higher by his love. As we navigate the perplexities of walking in obedience, we are lifted higher by his grace and higher by his love. And with the intricacies of living a life dedicated to the cause of Christ. We are lifted higher by his grace and higher by his love. While embracing the uncertainties of the faith, we are trusting in the providence of almighty God in the pursuit of obedience we surrender our will to a higher purpose. We are trusting in the providence of Almighty God. With each challenge that we face, face, we grow in resilience and steadfastness. We are trusting in the providence of Almighty God through the mazes 
of life's trial. We find safety in our Savior. We are trusting in the providence of Almighty God as we journey towards our calling and are determined to live for Christ. We are trusting in the providence of Almighty God. When we endure the complexities of our spiritual path, we are trusting in the providence of Almighty God. In the daily struggles of devotion, we find peace in surrendering to his grace. We are trusting in the providence of Almighty God. Understand, God, we are going to trust in you. God, you know that we need you. My God, we are leaning and depending on you. We are trusting you to take us to a higher plane. And we're asking you to mend our brokenness. And we're asking you to mend our wounded heart. See, my brothers and my sisters, there's power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There's power, there's power, there's wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Understand on today, there's power to make a way. There, was, there is power to usher in deliverance. There is power to mend our brokenness. There's power to bring us out. There's power to bring us right back in. There's power to make us live right. There's power that makes us walk right. There's power that'll make us love right. Would you be free from the burden of sin? Understand on today, there's power in the blood. There's power in the blood. Would you, over evil, a victory win? There's a wonderful power in the blood, there's power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. My brothers and my sisters, as we continue on this path to the res resurrection, there are some things I may not know. There are some places I cannot go, but I am sure of this one thing that God is real for I can feel him deep within yes God is real he's real in my soul yes God is real he has washed and made me whole see his love for me is like pure gold yes God is real for I can feel him in my soul. So my brothers and my sisters, what are the difficulties that we come across as we seek to fulfill our purpose in the face of the problematic? Number one, the complexities of living out the faith can cause us to feel abandoned. Number two, the perplexities of walking in obedience can lead to isolation. Number three, last but not least, the intricacies of a life dedicated to the cause of Christ can cause us to feel the despair of separation. 
But in the midst of it all, my brothers and my sisters, we continue to proceed towards our purpose. And I'll say it for the last time. It ain't easy, but it's necessary. God bless you.